hey welcome back to the channel you guys so good afternoon to you thank you for coming in i appreciate each of you for being here today so we have a little bit of news that you can use and definitely share out with other people um so more people will know what is happening to these folks that have been evacuated the past few days and as of today new orders of more evacuations are happening because what is going on is spreading rapidly so as you enter definitely hit that like button it does help the channel get out to more people i know i always say that but i have to say that this is a part of my youtube job <laughs> so um blessings to all of you as you enter if you are new welcome if you have not subscribed please consider subscribing if you are returning thank you so much for coming back to get the news that you can use okay so i'm gonna go ahead and share my page i hope that you can hear me okay so i think it's showing let me put my mic up where you can hear it hopefully bring it over here using my big boy today <laughs> i'm using my big boy today okay i'm about to go outside and start staying in my doors okay um let me get serious for a moment so 3500 homes are under threat as ventura county fire burns through neighborhoods This is horrible. People's memories going up in flames right here. So firefighters were struggling to contain a fast moving Ventura County fire, wildfire rather. Let me make it a little bit bigger for my slew. A Ventura County wildfire on Thursday. Um, that had already destroyed numerous homes and forced thousands to evacuate. And the dangerous winds fueling those flames were forecast to continue through Friday. Extreme Santa Ana winds helped propel several fires. Let me get my glasses right. Several fires across the region, but the mountain fire exploded Wednesday, sweeping into foothill communities around uh, Camarillo and Moore Park. By Thursday morning, the fire was listed at 14,500 acres with zero containment, according to the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. But after an active night, its actual footprint is likely much larger. It's insane. Um, it remains unclear exactly how many homes have been lost. But the devastation was evident along Hillside Street where the burnt husk of structures smoldered. Additional evacuation orders were issued early Thursday for residents in Santa Paula, located just north of Santa Clara River. The fire on Wednesday had sparked south of the river, but high winds pushed the fire west. With embers sparking new blazes, up to two and a half miles ahead of the main fire line. So I see why it's not contained. Thursday morning, forecasters were predicting slightly better conditions for the uh, mountain fire compared to the day prior with expectations that winds would not be as strong as Wednesday and winds will decrease faster in the afternoon. Still winds pushing the fire southwest could sustain a speeds of 30 to 55 miles per hour with gusts as high as 100 miles per hour in wind-prone mountainous locations on Thursday. So yet another area is in danger of um, residents being evacuated out of fear that it could spread to that area. He said fire inspectors are out assessing how many structures have been damaged and destroyed, but a precise estimate was not available as of Thursday. We just know that there's a lot, he said. At least 3,500 homes and other structures are threatened and more than 10,000 people have been forced to evacuate. And that's according to Governor Gavin Newsom. 
who said federal funds had been secured to help in fighting the blaze. Southern California Edison uh, began shutting off power. So customers are without power right now out of fear of the fires and just getting worse. Um, in areas where its equipment was considered at high risk of sparking wildfires in other areas. Look at that home. That's a huge home. Almost 70,000 utility customers across the Southland had power cut as of Thursday morning due to heightened wildfire risk. About a third of the shutoffs were initiated in Ventura County, but power was also cut across Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, Ventura, and Orange counties. That's a lot. In addition, an additional 257,000 were being considered for safety shutoffs in those areas through um, at least Thursday, as were customers in Santa Barbara and Tolar counties. The majority of the National Weather Service red flag and high wind warnings across the region were set to expire on Thursday evening. However, a standard red flag warning would remain in effect through Friday morning for the Ventura County Mountains. I think this is like a reminder, even for myself, <clears throat> who don't think about fires as much as I think about all these other things that I talk about. Having those preps together so if you are told that you need to evacuate immediately, you can at least have like a bag with some food in it and then another bag with your clothes and medications and stuff like that. Um, that's a scary situation to, to even think about, um, to even think about doing, you know, where do you go? I'm sure they told them where they can go, but having to leave your home and not knowing if you're going to come back to a home and then listening and you know to this article you can see that a lot of them are not going to have a home to come back to Let's see santa barbara county fire captain said his crew had successfully salvaged around a dozen burning homes in the hills of camarillo but not without challenges wow that looks like a war zone that looks like a war zone. I'm surprised those little um, palms are still there. We were inside of a structure fire and starting to make good headway when the hydrant went dry. Y'all, they ran out of water. I think everything is just so depleted from everyone sucking off of the water system. So you better look for some water restrictions if they all don't already have it in California. It's very unfortunate that people are losing homes and their belongings, he added. But from what we've heard, people are getting out safely. And that's the most important thing. And that is the most important thing that they had enough time to get out of those homes. Unlike that uh, one of those last fires that they had where they were actually... Um, people that lost their lives trying to get away from the fire, but got stuck in their cars and unfortunately um, passed away. Red Cross volunteers set up cots and tables as the organization began converting the temporary evacuation center at Padre Sierra Parish into an overnight shelter. They're going to need more than one night. The Salvation Army arrived with hot meals, the center opened at 10.30 a.m. By late afternoon, roughly 100 evacuees had taken shelter inside. A few arrived with minor burns. Oh, my goodness. Sustained during the evacuation. So what I said actually happened to some of those people, but they still made it through. So that is a plus. I'm reading this with y'all in real time. If you didn't, I didn't read it beforehand. Um, Red Cross is there. Many at the shelter work to find accommodations with friends or family or at nearby hotels with limited success. About 90 were set to spend the night there, hoping to return home Thursday. Uh, a woman named Linda Elmo, an evacuee, said the flames moved so rapidly she and her husband had little time to flee. 
that is what I'm talking about. It's like getting the notice and how soon you can get that notice means a lot. A firefighter knocked on the door, urging her and her husband to go, 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 she said. I mean, mm -mm. that go bag in those three goes that I just said, that go bag, we, we got to make sure that thing is good to go. It happened so fast, Elmo said. Local authorities have issued air quality alerts due to the smoke and the ash from the mountain fire. For much of Ventura in Los Angeles counties, dozens of Ventura County schools were closed Thursday because of the fire and several are closed through Friday. So y'all, let me know what you think of this news story here. It's sad to hear, but it is definitely serving as a reminder of... Um, of what we need to be doing to get ourselves prepped up and ready for um, any kind of situation, any kind of situation. We just never know. So the more we stock up our homes, the better. I know you say, well, if I'm stocking up my home, I'm going to lose everything. And that is true, but you're not going to lose your life and you will have some items with you when you do make it out okay. And the point is to make it out okay, to have that go bag ready with the items that you may possibly need. Because as you heard, a lot of them who were trying to get hotel rooms or stay with family, a lot of them were not able to do so. So you're stuck in that shelter. And although the shelter, they say, was giving out food, hot meals, how many hot meals are you getting a day? Maybe one? So you want to have something in between those hot meals that they are providing that will sustain you, you know, through this traumatic situation. So, again, let me know what you think down in the comments. Definitely hit that like button before you leave and share this video out. Thank you for being here on Tommy Bikes Homestead, bringing you news that you can use. A little bit of home makeover and renovation, gardening and raising homestead animals. So. I'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care, stay safe, and let's keep these people in our prayer. And I pray for you as you leave and go through your day. Bye, y'all. I love you, but God truly loves you more.